Welcome to the second episode of the Hitting the Crew podcast. It is your host, Jeremy Brenner. And the Hitting the Crew podcast is a chance for our listeners, our viewers, to get an inside look or listen. It is a podcast, so you're not really looking at much, but an inside view. How does that sound? View, right? Yeah, no, yeah, yeah view. <laughs> Uh, of the people that are behind the scenes and hitting the field, just get to know a little bit more about them and enhance the family aspect of hitting the field and to try to get, you know, kind of give people a platform to kind of, you know, speak their truth. So today on the Hitting the Crew podcast, I have with me the winner of Hitting the Feud 2019 or Hitting the Hitting the Feud 2019, yeah. <laughs> Kayla Burge. Kayla, what's going on, sis? I'm good. How are you? I'm I'm good now. Now that we're in here yeah. finally, uh, it took a little bit to get in here today, but thank you to the wonderful, wonderful employees of the Nicholson School of Communication and Media that yes. made this possible at the University of Central Florida. So, um, just kind of a deep, you know, overview of what today is about. It's all about you, girl. On your 16th birthday, you, oh you know where that's God. from? No, well, not really I your 16th but... <laughs> birthday. It's from SpongeBob. I'm like, it's Boys Who Cry. To watch well, you didn't Spongebob. watch SpongeBob? I literally, my mom just thought it was so like dumb. So growing up, I never watched it. <laughs> And then I watched like a couple episodes, but I don't have like a good background. Mm. My friends always make fun of me for it. Okay. Well, I will do the same here. So, <laughs> Kayla Burge, we know that you are a radio TV production major, correct? Yes, correct. At the University of Central Florida. And you don't, you weren't able to watch SpongeBob as a kid. But that's no, really, yeah. you know, you know it's. It's a hard part of my childhood growing up. It really made me struggle, <laughs> but I'm here today. I made it. <laughs> um, but we don't, you know, this is, I love the idea of this. And this is something that, you know, we've wanted to do for a very long time. Just so we kind of get to just get to know you better. And because I know, I know, I know you, but I don't really know you. You know what I'm saying? No, I get you, I get you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, just where, where are you from? I know vaguely, but <laughs> where are you from? Um, how many brothers and sisters did you grow up with? And, uh, what was your life like, you know, growing up? Okay. So I was born and raised in South Florida, like 30 minutes west of Fort Lauderdale on this like little suburban town called Cooper City. Very Cooper City. Okay. Very typical. What you see in the movies. Mom Not in my head. Like schools. I've been there before. Yeah, yeah. You know, you've been there many of times. <laughs> Snoop Dogg was probably, there once. But. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean... Yeah, I, I've heard of Cooper City, but never really Have been you really? there. I, maybe I just heard of it now. But. Uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I've probably been to places like Cooper City. No, just... yeah, for sure. Okay, so Cooper City, Florida. S literally lived in the same house my entire life, mm -hmm. never moved until college. Um, So I went to school there, have the same friends. I have one sister. She's five years older than me. Mm -hmm. Um, She goes to FIU down south, and we are like polar opposites it's yeah. so funny <laughs> like we get along just fine but it's like she opposites attract yeah mm -hmm. no it works mm -hmm. um she just is like you know i i don't consider myself like the most outgoing but i like tension way more than she does mm -hmm. she's like behind the scenes like do yeah. her thing and like that type of stuff um growing up oh my gosh that's like a hard question <laughs> um i had a really good family growing up like 
all my family, like my grandparents, my aunts, uncles, we all live in the same general area. That's nice. So it was nice because on yeah. holidays, you know, we'd all come together. Don't and... have to go too far. Yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, any pets? Any pets? No. no? Had, this is so sad. I had a dog for a week. A week? <laughs> <laughs> no, tell me more about this. Listen, How okay. do you have a dog for a week? Listen, so I was like begging my parents every day of my life up until like nine years old when we got the dog for a week um to get me a puppy and i was begging them begging them so my dad's like all right whatever let's let's try this out so he gets like a nice little miniature pincher so cute her name was roxy roxy yeah so cute (laughs) um and yeah it was great and then like the friday i remember literally vividly remember this day it was a friday and my dad calls me he's like we're giving her back and i was like (laughs) why nine-year-old me's like what <laughs> and he was like she's just too much work it's just not right for our family oh man and i was like sobbing i was like i don't want to do this <laughs> <laughs> i don't want to do this like no. i felt like the dog was a part of me like it's been a week but like that was my dog <laughs> like you can't just strip that away from me like that yeah, where, so yeah that- i wonder where roxy is now Honestly, I wonder too. She was a little, she was a little feisty. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the name fit. <laughs> so, uh, one pet, sort of. Um, sort and, of, yes. <laughs> and, sister and um, so what? You know, hitting the field is a sports brand. Yes. Um, you know, what did you play sports growing up? What did you do growing up, sports wise? Um, my parents are very big on me being involved in anything I could. Mm-hmm. Like I had, like I had to do something. Like I could never be a time growing up where I wasn't just like sitting at home. Just yeah. So mm-hmm. I did softball and swimming growing mm-hmm. up. Um, softball I was miserable at. I used to make sandcastles in the sand. Yeah. And I'd walk to base to base. They'd yell at me. It's just like too much for me. Like they expect me to run like that. That's crazy. Uh, <laughs> And then, so swimming, I was actually very good at, but I hated it more than anything. What was your What was your best stroke? Um, breaststroke. Breaststroke. Mm-hmm. See that that's that's difficult. That's probably yeah. the hardest one, honestly. Oh yeah, no, that I was mean... just my favorite. But even then, it could not. I was su- I was such a brat though. I would literally like s- scream tantrums to go to practice. I did not want to be there. Yeah. And me and my coach were like close, so I'd start screaming at her, and then she'd make me like. Do you know what Streamline is? Yes, yes. So she... I was a summer league swimmer for four oh, years. So oh. we got that in common. <laughs> <laughs> so she'd make me walk around the pool with, in Streamline, like mm-hmm. above my head. Oh. I'd be like sitting there sobbing. So yeah, that wasn't it for me. Um, then I did tennis for a day. Tennis for a day? Yeah. Ooh. Did soccer for two seasons, but the last game, my last season, I scored a goal for the other team. Oh. So, again, that was not for me. At least you scored. Yeah, right? <laughs> we still won, thank God. I was like, if we lost because of me, Ooh, like, I would then, never let myself live oh, that down. Oh, no, for sure. You got to play season three. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, just, I would have had to re- rebrand myself. Um, so then I always wanted to do cheerleading, though. Mm-hmm. But I was such, like, a clumsy child. I was always breaking bones and stuff. Oh, so no. I was like, no, like absolutely not you are not becoming a cheerleader and finally after like begging a bunch of times in seventh grade she let me cheer so i did that up until my senior year of high school wow that's exciting yeah well-rounded child i try (laughs) beautiful um so you come to uc why ucf i mean you live down south your sister at fiu why why ucf um i was my sister's definitely the one that like you know the more homebody like Mm -hmm. you wanted to stay local and i was always the one that just like wanted to like Go away, try something Spread my new. wings yes, kind of thing. that yeah. type of thing, yeah. So, um, I didn't, like, I was a UF fan growing up. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, I did apply, but, you know, rejected, so it's fine. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Um, They're better. With, I'm better without them. Yeah. Kind of no. thing. UCF, <laughs> go Knights. Um, Hard on. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, and I was looking at colleges, and we had come up to visit UCF a couple times, and I really liked it. And I had some friends coming, and then um, I was looking at, like, obviously like production programs within florida um and this came up um nicholson so i was like okay let's like i'm just gonna go like i got it It was my the first school i applied to and the first school i got into so i was like all right we're just doing this sounds good i mean hey yeah sometimes it's got to be like that but um why why rtv i mean you seem like i mean you and this isn't like to to slight anyone or anything like that you look you're not your typical like if i looked at you in person and mo- most people looked at you in person and this is what's great about breaking stereotypes i love breaking stereotypes is that 
you don't look like an RTV major. Yeah. You look like you would do something else. So why RTV? What, like, when did you know that you wanted to do radio TV production? Um, so up until about my, it was my sophomore year of high school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So up until then I had been like wishy-washy, like with what I wanted to do at that point, I think I wanted to be something in fashion. Yeah. Like I wear sweatpants all the time. So that wasn't happening. (laughs) Um, so 10th grade, our, my high school has a television production program and we were like a big deal nationally ranked and everything, but I was Mm. like, I don't want any part of this. Like, no. But then I got put in a law and ethics elective my sophomore year. And the first day I was like, hell no, get me out of this class. Yeah. This is boring. <laughs> Any other elective. So I guess I got to go to the yeah. RTV. No, and I wanted, I, I had gave him a list of every other elective I wanted. And they were awful. The only one that was open was this, like the television the program. The television program, yeah. So I remember like going to class on the first day and I was like, like, what is this? Like, this is actually really cool. Mm-hmm. And then I just got super into it. So I ended up like joining the program. We went to, um, I don't know if you ever heard of STN. It's Student Television Network. You compete like... Oh, no. It's a, it's a composition? Yeah, thing. you compete cool. nationally. So like I had gone yeah. to Nashville. I'm, a, I'm from Texas, so I'm just like, oh. I went to Nashville too for a competition. Oh, really? Yeah. I mean, it was totally unrelated to us. <laughs> but, but yeah, Nashville's a good place to have it because it's like right in the middle of the country. Yeah. No, it's nice. Yeah. So... So what do you do in STN competition? Okay. So you have... Everything is in a day. So right. I, like, one of the competitions was you had to make a short film within six hours. Wow. And then you had to turn it in. So it's, like, a lot of, like, energy. Mm-hmm. Everyone's, like, re- people would be running to, like, because you had to, like, drop your um, USB with a um, right. video on it mm-hmm. in a box. So everyone would be running. It was just stuff like that, like, really exciting. You only had a couple hours to make um, certain things, like documentary, music video, whatever it may be. Right. Um, and then they picked the best and, like, they win. So, like, our competition, though, our main one was more um, news talk show. Because okay. we did that every Friday. That was, like, a big deal at our school. It was, like, CTV on Fridays at 2.30. Right. Um, so we competed in that one, and we got fourth in the nation. My senior there you high go. school. Yeah. yeah. So it was really exciting, and I just, like, I fell in love with that after. So I was like, no, I, I actually want to do this. Like, I I started off, I wanted to be an executive producer. Right. Of film, actually. Yeah. Like, completely unrelated to mm-hmm. any of this. Right. Um, And then... I was also in marketing in high school. So I was like, no, maybe I'll do like commercials. And I was like, yeah, commercials. That's it. Mm-hmm. So then I got to UCF and my minor is marketing because I was like, I want to do commercials. And I like always, okay, growing up, my dad had two girls. So mm-hmm. I always make the joke. I'm like, well, one Hashtag of us. girl dad. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Girl, I texted him that the other day. <laughs> I was like, dad, you're a girl dad. Girl dad. <laughs> Um, so yeah, no, he had two girls. So I was like, one of us had to know sports. This man, like my dad mm-hmm. loves sports with everything yeah. in him, like big sports guy. So it was me. So growing up, I was always into it. Always go to the games with him. Always watch it on TV with him, ask him questions. But I never really like thought of it in like, as like a career. Mm-hmm. Um, so I went through on like, and I got really into baseball in high school. Cause, um, like I was, I live obviously near like Miami Marlins right. and, like Yellick, Stanton, Ozuna, that mm-hmm. outfield was, mm-hmm. I was in love with them. Like me and my friend would go to every game. Um, so I got really into baseball after that. And then um, when I got to college, I remember my friend works with um, the video athletics yeah. for UCF. Mm-hmm. Um, and he was like, yeah, I just, it's like so cool. I get to film sports and stuff. So I, I started seeing him do it. And then I started, I realized I was like starting to watch more sports. And I was like, what if I did this? I was like, yeah. This is kind of crazy. So I texted my dad and he was like, yes, finally. (laughs) Proud dad. (laughs) Yes. Proud girl dad. Um, (laughs) So, um, so yeah, I started getting into that more and now here I am. Yeah. So what, so it seems like you're really close with your dad. Yes. So what is a memory with your dad that you remember? It could just be, it could be from like any sporting event that you, that you two went to Mm -hmm. together or just in general. What is what is your favorite memory of your dad? Oh my gosh, that's such a hard one to pick. We are such goofballs together. We have the same sense of humor, so mm-hmm. it's like, um, I just I think it was like me in high school, like cheering and him coming to the football games. Mm-hmm. Like he would always be there every game, you know, cheering me on, being just like super supportive. And he got the best of both worlds. He got to watch football, and then he got to watch yeah. me. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so yeah, no, it was just like I always loved like doing that with him and like. Just being able to, like, talk with him and, like, have that bond. Like, I feel like, like, sports has definitely give us, like, a stronger bond Mm because we're able to talk about it. He loves to, like, 
explain things to me or like you know have a debate about whatever so it's just really cool yeah um how do you think like other than your dad because mm -hmm. it seems like your dad was one of your biggest inspirations yes. up to this point maybe is it someone like it could be someone from STN. it could be just someone in general who else inspires you from your life my grandma yeah <laughs> I is love... it on your dad? Is it your dad's mom or your mom's no, mom? No, my mom's mom. Okay. All right. She's a very wild Puerto Rican lady. <laughs> love her with all my heart. Um, Puerto Rican. Yes, there we yes. go. <laughs> my dad's white. That's why I don't speak any Spanish. And I sound very white. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah, my mom was born in Puerto Rico and everything. So, But my Listen. grandma is literally just a wild lady. I made a TikTok with her the other day. It was so She was dancing like... She's like, so am I famous now? Is this how it is? Like, that's her. Like, love. She wants to be famous so bad. So growing up, like, I was always, again, like, I don't consider myself, like, too outgoing. But she could mm -hmm. always tell, like, I had an act. Like, I like to be in front of the camera. I like to do this. So she was like, why don't you do like that? Like, why don't you be in front of the camera? Why don't you, why don't you push yourself to do something? Like, don't settle for anything. And she just always, like, encouraged me to, like, try whatever, no matter the risk. Right. So I just, like, and she's also... I consider her, like, one of my best friends in the family. Like, I can mm -hmm. talk to her about anything. And she just, again, like, that just encourages me to do my absolute best. And I just yeah. really appreciate her. Family woman. Yes. Yeah. Big on family. <laughs> um, so, you you have a... It, it's, it's not surprising to me that you have such a strong family background. I don't know. I It's something that I pick up with you. It's oh. like... It's like I can tell that you're a very – that family is important to you. Thank you. So <laughs> you have your, your blood family. Yes. I want to kind of get to your chosen family a little okay. bit. Who in your chosen family do you – like who in, who in your chosen family like inspires you? Chosen or family as in like friends? Friends. Yeah. Um, yeah. Friends or mentors or whoever. Okay. This is what I have to think about. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, as far as like related to me wanting to do production and everything, I have to thank my high school teacher mm -hmm. of the re production program. Right, right. Um, Alfredo Petrado, shout out to you. Um, <laughs> shout out. <Yep. laughs> um, yeah, no, he definitely, he encouraged me to like be where I am like today. Like he made me love it. Like he, he taught me everything I know. And like, I remember at graduation, I was walking down the stairs and he started crying like oh. when he saw me. So it was just like, oh uh, yeah. He that... was just someone yeah. that really inspired me to like keep going and like i could do this like he always told me like i was good at it like i, I have a knack for it so it was just it was really nice to get that boost and have then, you seen him since graduation i have yeah. i saw him last summer awesome yeah and like i'm friends with his daughter too yeah, yeah. so it, it was just really nice that, to see him that helps you know on the last episode johnny and i talked a lot about his high school mm -hmm. uh and and his and his high school teachers and how they inspired him and i mean i'm class of 16 so that was forever ago um but Four years. yeah and i haven't really I, I haven't kept in touch as much as i would like to mm -hmm. with my um i think if, i saw them like once my freshman year and then i haven't really gone to see them again um but it kind of brings back because my high school is a pretty large high school mm -hmm. um about 2600 oh my the, yeah how big was your high school mine's pretty big too Probably, i think yeah. my graduating class was 600 yeah that was about mine too okay. so i mean because i had a lot of those teachers too mm -hmm. like alfredo like uh like courtney and i forget like courtney for johnny but um mm -hmm. you know it, and it just it brings back a lot of memories i don't know it just i find it very fascinating yeah um, and it's good that people um because you do i think that's so key and so important mm -hmm. is that you need both your um your chosen family as well as you know your blood family i totally agree and and because your blood your blood family is always going to be there. It's like your foundation. Yes. But I think what's equally as important is the, the people that you choose. Oh yeah. That you put you place yourself. In, I totally in, agree. And then that that kind of shapes you, I guess. So mm -hmm. it's it's very um, it's very rewarding to hear that from you i think it, it's very uh welcoming and it, it feels good Thank it, feel, you, it, yeah. makes, it makes me feel good so <laughs> um but that and that's honestly kind of what i've got at hitting the field so yes now <laughs> how 
how did you learn about hitting the field? Because I'm not. It wasn't me. I know that. No, no. But I, I, how did you get to hitting the field? I, I just. I'm a little curious. So as soon as I decided, like, I wanted to be, I wanted to go into sports broadcasting. Like, right. I wanted to be a sports broadcaster. I was like, how do I get the experience I need? Because I was like, I have no clue what I'm doing. Like, mm-hmm. I definitely. No one's gonna just pick me up off the street right. without any experience. Um, and again, my friend had worked at the video athletics. Um, and I was a gonna do that and i was like working on like figuring out a schedule and stuff and then i follow monica on instagram Mm -hmm. so and i had followed her before and i remember she posted shout out monica yeah shout out monica (laughs) um (laughs) and i remember she had posted a picture of like it was like all of you guys on set and i was like what is this about so i clicked on the instagram and i saw it said sports premiere talk or premiere sports talk show Mm -hmm. and i was like oh my gosh this is perfect yeah (laughs) so i remember i dm'd the account right away and Jarrett was the one who answered (laughs) yes And he sent me the the group me, and I was like, I don't know a single person in this. I'm stressed out. Like, mm-hmm. okay, I guess I'm just gonna go. So he said, come to the meeting. So I went to the first meeting, and I remember I didn't I didn't even feel like cause I feel like you can walk into a room and a lot of clubs, a lot of I like vaguely remember this, but yeah, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm oh. sorry, I'm trying to picture this in my head, but yeah, no, yeah, I got yeah. you, got you. Um, so yeah, like I feel like when you walk into a place with a lot of different clubs and like workplaces or whatever it may be it can kind of feel like a little closed and mm-hmm. like clicky. And also I was really nervous. I'd walk in and like, no one would really like go out of their way to say hi to me. And I just kind of like push myself to like get yeah, in yeah. someone's click in the group. And it wasn't like that at all. Like I just mm-hmm. felt like a genuine, just like everyone wanted to work together. Everyone wanted to meet new people. They wanted to just encourage everyone. And so I was like, I was so excited. I remember during the meeting and then you came up to me after and you were like, what's your name? What's your major? And then I was like, oh, Kayla, radio television. He, and you were like, what do you want to do? And I was like, well, I want to be a sports broadcaster. He's like, great, let's do it. He's, You're like, whatever whatever great, you want to do, <laughs> let's do it. And I was like, oh, okay. Like, yeah. I just met you and you're already, you know, like, putting this much trust in me. But I just remember, like, I thank you because, like, I was like, okay, no, like, this, okay. like, he's very, like, welcoming. Like, he wants to help me. Like, I could tell, like, you wanted to help yeah. me learn and grow. So No, and, and that's that's the goal here. And what's so special about hitting the field is that, um, we're not, I mean, in a, in a sense, because we're all in the same area, we are competing against each other, but also it's more about, you know, supporting each other mm-hmm. as well. Um, because this time of life can be very challenging. You know, a yes. lot of us are away from our families from the first time. A lot of us are, you know, figuring things out. A lot of us are contemplating our careers and whether or not we're going on the right path. And mm-hmm. it's, and yeah, so it, it can be very challenging, but what I credit to where I learned this was the people behind me, because mm-hmm. this is my third year at hitting the field. So, awesome. um, it's the people that were, that were there, were here for you. Yes. That were here before me that paved the way. Yeah. And that's why hitting the field has lasted five years now is because the people have, you know, It's because it's built that family foundation. Yes. And we've we've been able to push ourselves together. And it's it's nice to see someone that, you know, like yourself that said like to to hear that from me, that that makes me feel good. That makes me think that I'm doing my job correctly. Oh, 100 percent. And and that uh, that's like the ultimate ultimate present. I definitely think like anyone who's like. I would recommend this to anyone who's looking for that sense of community within right. such a large school because, right. like, there's not many organiz- like clubs like this where you're getting that, like, everyone wants to help each other. I remember the first day I walked in there, a lot of people could have been like, yeah, I'm not helping her. Like, yeah. And they were like, no, like, what do you want to do? I want to teach you on it so, like, we can grow together. And, like, that's just the amazing thing that everyone wants to help each other and no one – it's not a competition. It's not anything. It's just a family coming together to produce a show. Absolutely. And, and you're part of that. And I'm happy that you're part of that. Thank you. Um, so I kind of want to, I want, let's, let's just, let's do some rapid fire questions. Um, (laughs) we'll, we'll, it's just a little fun little game just to try to figure out a way to steer this conversation. Um, favorite color. Purple. Ooh. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) I'm Uh, orange. So that's why, that's why we go together the orange and purple. Yeah, of course. Um, Favorite restaurant? I like tacos. So wherever those are sold. Okay. Favorite, favorite, <laughs> okay, favorite food tacos. Yeah. Um, favorite movie? Oh my gosh. This is so cheesy. You're going to make fun of me. It's Cinderella Story. 
<laughs> the, Liz, um, the Hillary Duff version. <laughs> like, Why? Every, I feel like Why? as a, as a production major, like everyone's like expecting me to have some like Oscar winning film, like Fight Club or something. And I'm like Cinderella. Cinderella story. story. <laughs> like, Why not? That's my favorite movie. Yeah. So yeah, but growing up, whenever I'd go to my grandma's house. She'd always put it on for me. Yeah. And, like, I had created this fantasy that that was going to happen to me. You know, I'd, I'd, like, date the star quarterback in high school. You know, we'd go to Princeton together. Yeah. And, like, that obviously didn't happen. But um, <laughs> it's still one of my favorite movies. Like, I watch it whenever I'm going to feel good. I can probably recite half the film. So, <laughs> love the movie. <laughs> love that for you. Favorite TV show? New Girl. New Girl. I, I, I That doesn't surprise me at all. <laughs> I know. I love it. It's just, it's, you can't hate Zoe Dejanel. You really can't. You really. I, she is pretty good. She's amazing. She good. What is she doing now? I don't know. Is she putting out new music or something like that? No, that's Mandy Moore. Oh, uh, okay, okay. But she's dating the guy from um, Property Brothers. Mm. Favorite band or that's, artist? That's a hard one because I literally listen to like I can go from rap to country so quick. It's not even funny. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, I'm just. I'm that way too. Step one. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not tied down to a genre. I'm more just kind of like with yeah. whatever I'm feeling that day. But if I had to pick one, like, I guess, like, One Direction, and then, like, they're, they're so Harry Styles, okay. like, Nile Yeah, Warren. yeah. I mean, I'm the kind of person that can go from, uh, like, I can go from, like, current stuff to Dancing Queen. To, oh, yeah. Like, like, I'm, like, just, just don't, you don't, to Avril Lavigne, like, no, my like friends- literally just, like... <laughs> My friends get in my car and they're like, your shuffle is the weirdest mix I've ever heard. Like, it's like slow it's country jams eclectic. to like The Box by Roddy Rich yeah. the next second. Like, <laughs> um, favorite sports team? Okay, like, Anything. do you want me to list it? Okay, sure, so list, like, list them, list them. Baseball Dodgers, of okay. course. Love my mm-hmm. Dodgers. Um, Why the Dodgers? Okay. That's so, a good question. Because yeah. like Miami, you grew up mm-hmm. like miles away from Marlins, Marlin Stadium. So why the Dodgers? I grew up, my, I told you I was really close to my grandma, and yeah. she is a Brooklyn Dodgers fan. Oh, okay. So, yeah. she always, like, instilled that Dodgers mentality into me, and then my family was Marlins fans, mm-hmm. and again, I loved the team when, like, rest in peace, Jose Fernandez, mm-hmm. um, Christian Yellick was on at Stanton, yeah. all, that team, I loved that team, and then, so, and I had, like, the Dodgers and the Marlins, like, I was equal, mm-hmm. and then when they got all traded and stuff, like, when Stanton, yeah, like, they all, just, like, yeah. the Marlins completely rebranded themselves, mm-hmm. I just didn't feel like... That same connection, so yeah. I was like, all right, I'm 100% Dodgers we're, we're Dodger now, Blue. we're taking it. Bleeding Dodger Blue. Yes, so I just... Speaking I of team. which, Dodgers traded for Mickey I, Betts yesterday. I literally saw tweets about it, and I thought it was like a like fan prediction, like mm-hmm. they wanted it. I didn't think it was like real, so I was like, yeah. oh, haha, funny. It, if, it's, if it's got that blue check, yeah. that's when you know. No, that's when I, that's when I checked, because... John, Johnny Jackson had yeah. tweeted the little his little like cartoon drawing of it, and I was like, "Oh, he just wants him to go to the Dodgers. How sweet!" <laughs> and then I went on at the MLB's Instagram and I saw it, and I, like, I remember I was, like, screamed. I was like, "Yes, like we're, we're gonna be good!" <laughs> and we got him and David Price, and I was like, "This is good. This yeah. is good. We needed this." So yeah. I'm very excited going into the next. Jock season. Peterson of the Angels. I was sad about it, but I'm like. I just, as long as Bellinger and Seeger stay on yeah. the Dodgers, I will be okay. Mm-hmm. The moment they leave, I'll, I'll cry a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, f- other than Dodgers and Marlins. Dolphins fan, die okay. hard. My dad's, that's my dad's favorite sport. Yeah, yeah. And so that's, yeah, Miami Dolphins, even though we absolutely suck. <laughs> I mean, hey. But maybe we're getting to you, us, you beat, so. You beat the Patriots. We <laughs> We did beat the you Patriots. Beat, you did beat the Patriots. Did That's like, we could have a horrible season. You did a lot of teams a solid right there. Yeah. You did, you did the, the Texans a solid. You did You did the Chiefs a solid. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You did the Chiefs a solid, yeah. too. Yeah. And they won the Super Bowl. And look Bowl. at that. So you went down to Miami for Super Bowl festivities, Yes, right? I did. How was that? It was so much fun. Yeah. I was like, I wish I would have come earlier and like, I don't know, like, because I didn't even know about half the events that were down there. Mm-hmm. I was just kind of going home for the weekend. And I was like, well, let me do some stuff. Yeah. And there was so much going on. It was crazy. That's I... more about what the Super Bowl is about. Yeah. Because not everyone can go to the game. Not no, everyone has that Not kind everyone of has $3,500 no, to drop in a nosebleed seat. Absolutely not. <laughs> no, but um, people might have, you know, 10 bucks to go, go yeah, down exactly. to like, the beach and whatever's going on on the beach. Mm-hmm. So what is, what is your favorite memory from the weekend? Um, favorite moment of the weekend? I thought it was cool just going, like, 
the atmosphere was so different in Miami with the Super Bowl. Like, yeah. everyone, there was Chiefs fans everywhere. There was Niners fans everywhere. Like, everyone was just kind of, like, happy, too. Like, it was just such a happy environment. There was, like, celebrities everywhere. It was, like, it was just such an exciting time. Like, you wanted to, like, go wherever you could. And there were so many events. I remember I went to, there was a free event at Bayfront Park. And you could just walk around, and they had, like, picture spots and, like, some, like, information. And it was just really cool to walk yeah. around and be a part of the atmosphere. Yeah. So, I, I, let's – I'm going to totally shift gears now. Okay. But um, <laughs> you're never supposed to ask a woman your age. But just for the sake of this, how old <laughs> – how, <laughs> so, you're you're sophomore, so you're, yes. like, 19? 19, yeah. Okay. You don't seem 19. Really? <laughs> I, I don't I don't get 19 from you. Do you and think older or younger? And th- no, it's not. It's not, like – your looks or anything Mm -hmm. it's just the way you carry yourself you're a very you're very uh, you're very happy and i i can't i know why now but you're also very mature for your age thank you so so why do you think that you are that way i think it was just the way that i was raised you know um how 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 were you raised just like a very loving environment like I always had, again, I always had family behind me. Like, they were all there. I never felt, like, alone in that sense. Um, And my mom always just raised me to have good manners. Like, she put the fear of death in me. If I was (laughs) to disrespect anyone, I was getting my butt whooped. I'm from Puerto Rico. Like, don't don't mess with me. (laughs) Start cursing at me in Spanish. Like, it gets scary. So, (laughs) (laughs) but, yeah, no, I think I went to just the way I was raised, you know. I was just... I don't, I don't know how to describe it, but it's just like a very loving environment that didn't put up with disrespect at all. Right. Yeah. So. I mean, like that, that's just like, to me, what I see, like when I look at you as someone who's very confident, very, you know, happy, just happy go lucky, but also confident and know what she wants. Thank um, you. <laughs> yeah. So like, I don't know, like what? is the most like if you if we're telling the story of Kayla Burge mm-hmm. and we're we we open the book mm-hmm. what is the most dynamic moment what is the moment that changed your life the most like growing up like is there something that stands out as something that really like you know changed your mind and it's okay if it isn't cuz cuz it might there might not be it's only been you know 18 19 years so is there a moment growing up that like changed your perspective about something or you know really altered something in your in your imagination um i think it was honestly my senior year of high school Mm -hmm. i went through um like my like early years like middle school like beginning of high school just being so worried about what other people's opinions on me were that i ended up not living to my full potential in high school you know Mm -hmm. like i just didn't want to stand out too much i would be in, i was a cheerleader but I'd, i i want to be in the back and i did this but i want to be in the back and i was like that's not me like i knew inside i just it wasn't right but i just got so consumed in other people's opinions that that was what it was yeah and i remember when i finally it was i owe it a lot to the tv production program because i didn't have a choice but to be out mm-hmm. there outgoing um and so i remember my senior year of high school i was between that cheerleading and i was involved in deca which is like a business program I was, that's that's, oh really? Yeah, that's when I went to Nashville. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. that's awesome. I went 2016 ICDC. Oh gosh, that's yeah. so much fun. It was a lot of fun. That's yeah. where I got my cowboy hat. Oh, you know that cowboy hat that was on the show on Monday? Yes. That, that, <laughs> that was from Decca. Shout I, out Decca. <laughs> shout out Decca. But uh, yeah, no, I went to ICDC, and the, you know how they like at, at nationals, what they do is they give every state mm-hmm. like a prop or an item yeah. to de- like you know define them I yes guess. <laughs> stereotypically like and which is funny because i'm from like a very very suburban part of texas mm-hmm. where there's not a whole lot of cowboys or anything like that yeah so a lot of like asian american people so it's oh. it's very anti it's uh, there's not a whole lot of you know yeehaw yeah there, but <laughs> but uh we all got cowboy hats and that's so funny it was my fourth year in deca and the first year i made it to national so i was like I'm keeping this one because yeah. a lot of people like what they do is you trade you trade your items with yeah. other with other people from other places around the world. So like um, like Canada had like a hat with the maple leaf on it. Mm-hmm. I got one. I of remember those. like the pins and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I have like all the pins and everything like that. But I was like, the Texas hat is mine. Like I worked yeah. hard for this. Like no, there's no giving that one. I, w- I would have friends that would go every year and they'd be like, oh, like here's my cowboy hat because I made it to nationals and I was like, <sighs> but then <laughs> but then you know I waited to my senior year and. 
senior year, I got there and I got my hat and I was. That's awesome. I mean, that wasn't easy. And I now, didn't make now it's on hitting the field. So, <laughs> yeah, so you never know. You never know where that hat's going to end up. But, never um, know. So, so, yeah, you did DECA. Yeah, so uh-huh. I just kind of, like, owe it all to that. Like, my involvement is just, it really brought me out of my shell, and I was finally, like, becoming myself. And I yeah. just felt like that was the year I just, like, had the most fun. Because I was just, I wasn't living for anyone else. I was living for myself. So yeah. it was kind of like that great. life-turning moment where I was like, well, I can do me now. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, and you can do you. So you're 19 now. Yes. Fast forward to 2030 or 29 (laughs) where do you hope to see kayla at 29 um i hope to see kayla well into a career Mm -hmm. um who knows where that is let's just shoot big the goal is espn one day Uh, yes Mm -hmm. (laughs) um so yeah so something like again well into my career um hopefully by then i'll have some sort of family whether it's just a husband or kids and husband (laughs) um (laughs) Hopefully I'm not alone. <laughs> yeah, that, that that would that would That'd be so sad yeah. at 29. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think just like want to be well into my career and have like a good family. That's where I see myself. Because you're a family, you're a family person. I am a family person. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, is there anyone that you would like to give a shout out to right now? Just like anyone that it could be your dad, it could be someone we haven't mentioned yet, it could be. Um, I'll talk about my roommates because they'll be so happy when right, I go yeah, home. Yeah. <laughs> Shut up, roommates. Yes. Come on, roommates. So one of them is my best friend since seventh grade. Okay. Um, Priscilla Fiaco. Shout out Shout to Shout out you. Priscilla. <laughs> All right. And then the other one is someone I met last year, Julia Kemper. Shout out Julia. Um, they're my two best friends up here. I would probably have gone insane already if they weren't living <laughs> with me. So love you guys. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's important to have that, like... Like, my roommate, I've lived with my roommate since freshman year. That's so, awesome. like, we've, and one of my other roommates now also lived with me freshman year. So, it's it's important to have, like, you go home and you, you have yeah, places exactly. that you can, like, see. Um, no, we literally go home, like, some days, if one of us has a bad day, we're just storming into each other's room, like, guess what just happened to me? Mm. And, like, we just vent for an hour, and then we're laughing, like, 20 minutes <laughs> later. Like, it's it's just so fun. That's that's awesome. That's awesome. Um I'm so glad we get to do this. Yes, I'm so excited. Yeah, because, um, you know, and and I wouldn't say that anything you've told me really surprised me, which I think is good because, like, yeah, you're kind of what you see is what you get. Yeah, and you're very much, you know, and I. I but now I know why, <laughs> and th- and that's and that's kind of the purpose of the hitting the crew podcast is yeah is you're supposed to you know get to know just get to know the people that are behind the humans Mm -hmm. that are behind it because it's because i mean we are people and we we do work on this show but it we're more than that um and and this is the the platform that i've wanted to give the humans of hitting the field yes to do um so thank you so much for coming on today of course thank you for having me i am so so happy that you're part of the hitting the field family oh thank you so much Um, i'm I'm really happy to be a part of yeah and it's like I, I really I, I don't just say this like I don't I don't want to just come across like I'm saying this but I I really think like when I when I see people and like when I saw you I remember like she's one to remember oh thank you like, <laughs> wow. like and it's and to me it's like an instinct thing and I trust my awesome. instincts and my instincts weren't wrong with you I and I think honestly Kayla the best has yet to come from you Oh, thank um, you. I, I really think that you have a really strong head on those shoulders and I want nothing but the best for you. I think that I, I think a lot of you. So, thank and, you so and much. I, and I know I'm not the only one that does. Um, I might be, I, I have the chance to say it now, <laughs> so I'm saying it now. Um, but I think that, uh, the hidden the field family is better and stronger because you're in it. Oh, thank um, you. I'm going to cry. So, <laughs> Thank you. So yeah, um, I guess I guess this is a good time to thank call you. it off. Uh, yes. But uh, thank you so much, Kayla, for joining me on the Hitting the Crew course, podcast. And on Monday, we will have our annual Black History Month show with special hosts Armand Sardui, the host of UCF's uh, NABJ chapter, and Shay Lewis uh, will also be uh, hosting a. Uh, black women segment on the show we're really excited about uh incorporating that um it's one of our 
m- proudest achievements at hitting the field and you know year three it's going to be hopefully the best one yet yes. uh we also have tomorrow our hitting the field uh trade deadline podcast we are going to be going live at 1 30 p.m uh and we will go through the deadline at three o'clock and we will be uh covering the aftermath of the trade deadline i'll be there with chris wolf and zach gervais so be sure to check us out and tune in right before the deadline because we're gonna be here like you know going through breaking news all that (laughs) it's gonna be a lot of fun i'm really looking forward to it and i'm sure uh we will be talking a lot of trades tomorrow um so be sure to check that out as well uh hidden field might i add is also coming out shortly kyle partain and emily hernandez talked about UCF baseball and softball. Softball starts uh, Thursday, I believe, tomorrow. So a big tournament this weekend for the Knights. So uh, they have talked about that, and that should go out sometime today or early tomorrow. Um, anyway, thank you so much, Kayla, for coming course, in the thank booth you for today. Having me. Thank and uh, we will uh, catch you guys on the flip side. <laughs> Thank you.